downtown Los Angeles, a crowded, chaotic, and profoundly fascinating city. Some people love it, some hate it, but most have a love-hate relationship with it. I used to work in downtown LA and have brewed a lot of feelings toward the city through the years. And I'm going to allow the next few minutes to be a stream of thoughts, trying to put these feelings into words, so bear with me. The City of Angels is unlike any city you know. It is historical, insanely creative, has amazing shops, art installations, restaurants, museums, and I will show you all that. But what truly differentiates the city from the rest of the world is its people. Los Angeles is almost like the world itself. If you take whatever culture or societal class or type of humans out there, cram it to fit into a small space, you get LA. You know, when I moved to LA, from, I was a brand new immigrant from Armenia. And I, all I knew by, at that point is people who kind of look like me, think like me, speak the same language as me. And I've never seen anything like here in LA. Every morning as I would drive into the city, I would exit the 7th street and never fail to think how absolutely extraordinary it is. If you drive through the city for just a couple of miles, you will pass through every level of a societal ladder. You start with the warehouses, then the homeless encampments. They're just waking up to start yet another day. Then past just a few blocks, you'll enter the lower middle class area where you go for jewelry or fashion or flower bargains. People work hard here, go home exhausted by the end of the day. And as you drive, you keep climbing the societal ladder. With every block, people are changing. The buildings are changing, some are old and some historic. And with beautiful attention to details, it's a place of hustling. Lots of small businesses and individuals rent space in these buildings. And then there's a financial district with more modern buildings, expensive offices, and really wonderful art museums, concert halls, and theaters. To me, it was absolutely extraordinary to see all these levels of society in one place, separated by blocks and walls and windows. And you can choose to spend your time in one section or another, but you cannot avoid experiencing the place in its entirety and cannot unsee what you see. The city is colorful, complex, and very chaotic and emotionally messy just like humanity itself. Well, let's get back to business. The itinerary of the day is gonna be actually a lot of fun. It's food and books and museums and historical buildings. They're all fairly within walking distance. We're gonna end up walking today probably about like mile, mile and a half. And you want that because there's a parking issue that driving within downtown LA is pretty nightmarish because it gets really busy and pretty much entire day. So once you park, that's it, you park. The itinerary and the parking location I'm going to put in the description below for you so you can, you know, plan, it, you can see how we planned our day. Los Angeles was founded in 1781 by a group of 44 settlers from African, Native American, and European heritage, which probably laid the foundation of LA culture today. California was part of Mexico under Spain rule back then, and they called the area El Pueblo de la Reina de Los Angeles, which means the town of Queen of Angels. In 1810, when Mexico gained independence from Spain, Los Angeles became part of Mexico, and then until Mexican-American War, when it became part of America, United States. And while all these governments were changing, uh, Los Angeles boomed, it, it grew so much. Within 50 or 60 years, it became the largest in California. There are many historical buildings and landmarks in downtown Los Angeles. 
most built in late 1800s in Bue art style, which is a fancy word for a classic Roman or Greek proportional building mixed with some extravagant or flamboyant Renaissance and Baroque influences. It was a favorite architectural style for government and institutional buildings here. You see this market should be experienced like no other. Grand Central Market was opened in October 1917, a little more than 100 years ago, and it is still very much alive and booming. It was one of the largest and finest public markets in the West Coast and a true reflection of the city and its astonishingly diverse and creative multicultural community. You know, they call it Wonder Market and I totally agree. I could, have, I could spend here like an entire day sampling and tasting everything. Yeah. It's amazing. It has like literally from every part of the world they have food uh, representation. This is Homer Laughlin building and actually it was uh, in Los Angeles the very first fireproof and steel reinforced building. They did a lot of modifications to the building and um, a lot of buildings here in downtown Los Angeles in downtown Los Angeles were renovated, um, especially in 1980s, it went through a lot of renovation. And Grand Central Market and also Million Dollar Theater were renovated too. All right, I have a treat for you. One of the very early buildings in downtown is this Bradbury building and that's Louis Bradbury, a gold mining tycoon. The building is a historic landmark now, but people rent here offices, which is kind of cool. Architecturally, it is an incredible building. Marble staircase, iron balconies, shaped by hammering. There's an open cage hydraulic elevators, and then there's this massive skylight that makes all these details magical absolutely worth the stop. So this building was designed by uh, George Wyman. The guy actually didn't really have too much of a professional training. It was completed in 1894 and Bradbury paid for it of course, but he died a couple of years before it was completed so he never really got to enjoy it. He paid for this building 500 million, no sorry, $500,000 which is in today's money. 16.5 million. You know, it's just a couple of minutes stop, but it's really hard to express how very unique this lighting and all these rails make the space so amazing stop. Welcome, welcome for the magical world of millions and millions of words. This is a last bookstore, which is really not so far from the truth. It's a 22,000 square feet of expressive creativity. They have here an amazing selection of books, comic books, records and rare books, collectibles, first editions and an awesome yarn shop. Josh Spencer, a very brave man, he opened a bookstore back in 2005 in downtown. It was in smaller loft, but he ended up growing into this. And it's one of the biggest still standing independent bookstores in the world right now. And I am not really surprised because it's not just a bookstore, it's an experience of creativity. It's quite fantastic for people of any age, adults and kids. They do have an online shop, of course. <laughs> so if you ever want to shop somewhere placed other than Amazon, then um, I will leave, leave you the link in the description. You know, this building actually back in 1900, like early 1900s used to be National Citizen Bank. And they still have all these vaults from the bank left untouched, which is actually really cool. 
back in 1900s-ish, many banks and financial institutions used to be in this area. People used to call the street the Wall Street of the West. But after World War II, all these national banks and financial wealthy financial institutions, they started moving because the city expanded, so they started moving out and the city was left with no money neglected abandoned and that's when the downside downslide of downtown started until in 1980s the the downtown was barely inexpensive and some artists started noticing how all these historical buildings so beautiful and at the same time very inexpensive so they started renting spaces here for their galleries and for their shops and for their offices so uh, eventually this place they, they more and more people came and uh, Back in 1980s, they started renovating a lot of things and they kind of put together all this old, very old and new and created a very unique, fun, artsy location. So a lot of people started moving here and just very recently, just a couple of years ago, maybe four or five years ago, they opened the Whole Foods here. So now you can say downtown has arrived. As you go up the stairs, the only stairs in the store, you enter a very special space only human creativity could come up with. You see art installations, and past that, there's a yarn shop and a few local artist galleries you can check out. They call this entire space the Spring Art Collective. Just like in old days, downtown LA is busy. The amount of stimulation you get here from the amount of people and the societal and cultural contrast and coexistence and the mix of old and new architecture is incredible. And maybe that's why LA is so creative and continuously attracted many young people with a desire for self-expression. But life is hard in LA and it is a lot to process so the creativity it produces is very much in your face. There are many stunning murals and graffitis we drove by and they're big, bold and expressive. The mural landscape is always changing here and it is truly fascinating. One of the coolest, coolest spots in Los Angeles. 120 year old funicular that takes you uphill. So we are on the way from Midtown to the Uptown. For 120 years, the Angel Railway was a big relief for many hardworking Angelinas and tourists too, because no trip to downtown Los Angeles is complete without stopping by by at least either Contemporary Museum of Art or Broad Museum. It is amazing. Once you get uphill, it's a different world out here. So uptown is all about expensive offices, high-end restaurants, but also fine art, music, theaters, outstanding museums. This entire area is absolutely amazing. There's a Disney hall, there's all music centers and opera, there's a Broad Museum, and then of course there's a Los Angeles Museum of Contemporary Art, which is also amazing. So this is my favorite museum, Broad Museum. It's very interesting building. Some people call it that it looks like a cheese grater, <laughs> but it has the most eccentric uh, pop culture, modern art collection from the Broad family. And entrance is free, but it gets really busy. Reservations are required, so you should plan in advance when you decide to come. The museum has works of some of the founders of American pop art, Liechtenstein and Andy Warhol. That's called Nation's Nightmare, 1951. Not a lot changed since then. The museum also has awesome pop art installations. Always the busiest room. Favorite for all ages. What do you want? What do you want 
So what do you think this is? Before we headed out of LA, we had a nice dinner at Bottega Louis. I had my newly favorite gazpacho soup dressed in pretty flowers. It was amazing how many things we experienced today. Los Angeles throws you into the world of rags and riches and everything in between. It is a reflection of us as a society and it tells our story, full of triumphs and falls. We're very creative and very capable. We figured out how to fly to space and how to transplant hearts, but we yet to figure out how to take care of our fellow brothers and sisters in need. We fight about who should do it and how and fail over and over. But as I look into the rear view mirror and watch the city of Angel disappear, the memories that stayed with me after today are truly amazing. Very meaningful and also full of history and art left me with a lot to think about. And isn't that a true purpose of travel? <laughs>